Um, hey guys, it's Tim Liggins. Um, just finished uh, training back and a little bit of biceps. Um, currently, right now, I am 5'8 and about 233, 34 this morning. Um, I started out with some back today, so you know, again, when I'm getting close to competitions, I may train some things a little bit more frequently or you know, just kind of go by feel and if I feel recovered or not. So, um, training back maybe every five days or so. Uh, so, started out with some pull downs. Typically, with pull downs, I always start with them at the very least as a warm up because I just like how I get a good stretch uh, and it leads me into whatever my first back movement is. Um, today, I decided to actually work up and wait and do some working sets. So, we did a few warm ups and then got to uh, uh, working set weight and did a few sets there. Um, got a lot of blood in there and, and kind of set, set us up for the second uh, movement. From there we went to rows, did it on the um, the T-bar row. So the version of it um, is kind of come more popular with, with John Meadows, he, he named it. So I definitely want to give credit to John, it's, it's, a, it's a metal row kind of adaptation that he does and um, you know, I've tried it a, a little bit recently and I like it because as opposed to a dumbbell, I feel like there's a little bit more control, I can control the movement a little bit more. Um, but at the same time get a good stretch and um, the way that I can grip the end of the bar allows me to have a pretty loose grip with my with my um, my V straps that I actually can just really pull with my elbows and get a good squeeze so I'm not so much worried about holding the weight and my grip getting tired as much as I can just focus on getting my elbows up high and squeezing and contracting my back so um, that's a, that's the reason why I like to, to do that as a variation uh, to a typical uh, dumbbell row. Uh, from there, we moved on to the the high uh, hammer uh, rows. Um, I, I like to grip the outside grips of the handle a little bit. I like to stretch um, a little bit more, and I feel it um, doing a little bit a wider version of that. Um, the way I had the seat, um, it, I, the intention was for me to squeeze kind of my middle back, middle to upper back, and so that was really the intention of, of, of hitting that part of my back. And again. Um, not super, super heavy, you know, trying to keep the, the chest against the pad and really getting your elbows back. So getting a good stretch, lengthening the muscle and then shortening it up as much as possible, um, getting the elbows back, and, but at the same time pulling your chest forward. So um, uh, that was our next movement. From there we went to uh, a superset um, with seated, seated cable rolls combined with um, the, the cable pull downs or pullovers. And so, um, the variation that I do on the cable rolls, especially towards the end of a workout, is instead of putting your feet high up on the platform and really going heavy, either having your feet planted on the floor or having them really low on the uh, platform. And that really allows you to kind of take the leg drive out of it, um, takes kind of the lower back movement out of it, so you're really just isolating and squeezing your back. So um, so the weight on this is not so much of an issue, it's, it's more about getting a good contraction and a good squeeze. Um, and so then combining that with the the cable pull downs just allows me to just pump as much blood into the muscle as possible. At that point in the um, in the workout, we've already done a few movements, and so um, it's more about contraction and continuing to get blood into the into the muscle as opposed to trying to move the weight a really heavy weight at that point. Um, from there, uh, we did some some shrugs. Um, shrugs I usually throw in either with um, back or with shoulders this week. Um, threw them in with back. Um, so did a dumbbell shrug, which I do every so often. I hadn't done them in a while, so I threw those in. Um, and, and as you see in there, I mean, I'm doing some, some holes at the top, maybe a, a one or two contra or, you know, second contraction at the top um, for at least the first several reps. And so, um, again, I, I, like, I like doing a little bit higher reps on those uh, as opposed to, you know, six, eight, ten reps and just kind of a, a really explosive shrug. I like to actually control the weight the whole time. Um, and I, it tends to work better for me. Uh, I feel it better doing it that way. So that's, uh, that was the, the method behind that. And then we finished up uh, with um, Smith Machine deadlifts. Really, it was mainly, mainly meant for contraction, kind of like a hyperextension as a variation to that. So the weight was pretty light, so it wasn't so much like a rack deadlift, which I will do maybe every other week. Um, it was more for just really squeezing and contracting your lower back. And so, um, you know, not going really over two plates on it, but um, nice controlled movements at the top, squeezing, squeezing the elbows back. Um, and just at that point, it's just finishing off. So um, that, that was the last movement for back. From there, uh, we moved on to some biceps. Uh, biceps, I usually throw in a couple movements with on back day, and then I also may do back or buys and tries by themselves on a different day. But uh, for today, uh, we started out with just the 
um, the preacher, the one arm preacher curl machine. Um, I like to start off with that just because I like to do uh, kind of a unilateral movement, really warm up each arm. Um, and so did a few warm up sets and then did one or two working sets um, before we moved on to the, uh, the next movement, which was the incline dumbbell curls. Um, another variation of dumbbell curls, I, I tend to do standing quite a bit. So uh, mixing it up, doing the, the incline and, and actually um, uh, doing both arms at the same time was just, was just a different variation today. So I uh, didn't need a lot of weight. Again, it's because of the isolation that you get when you're leaning back. You're not able to cheat. You're not able to get any momentum. So it's all about just squeezing and contracting the muscle and you get a, good, a great stretch um, from that angle as well. Um, I, I switched it up after a couple sets and did a, a, a set of, of standing dumbbell curls. But the variation for me from what I typically do is um, the fact that I brought, as, as I'm bringing up and contracting, I actually bring my elbow up a little bit higher and, and get a really hard contraction at the very top and then start to release the weight um, even before I, I, I lower the weight. So it's like stretching it out at the top, which just keeps constant tension on it the whole time. So I really hard squeeze at the top and then start to let it out slowly before I actually lower the weight down. Again, um, not, not a lot of weight needed for that just because of the fact that you're really keeping that tension and you're really keeping a hard contraction the whole time. So um, when I do buys after, after biceps, they're already a little bit pre-exhausted. So I tend to do more, um, more contraction work on those days anyway, as opposed to some of the uh, traditional, maybe like the, the, the barbell curls or the heavier dumbbell curls, just because um, at, the, at that point, I've already pre-exhausted the biceps from, for a little bit from, from back as well. Um, and then we moved on to cable uh, curls. And so just hitting the outer biceps with those, um, you know, uh, I do, sometimes I do them dumbbells, sometimes I do cable. Today we do cables with the ropes. And so again, um, it's just making sure I get a good stretch and then going up, going up um, to about where they're, where they're, um, um, I guess, you know, about that 90 degree angle roughly. I don't go up too high on those, but um, so that, that was pretty much it for today. Um, again, you know, when I, when I throw in buys after back, it's, it's more, it's just try to get, get a good pump and get a good squeeze and, and get some blood in the biceps um, more so than, than the fact that I just got something from, from doing back training. So, um, so that that was what we did today. Um, what was your last show, Tim? You did last year, right? Last show for me was North Americans um, last uh, Labor Day weekend, and uh, I placed. I did the over thirty-five class, and I placed third in the uh, in the light heavyweights. I, I dropped down from previously. I did the Masters Nationals earlier that year, and I was a heavyweight and placed fifth. Um, but basically, my weight. I mean, I was at two hundred pounds on stage, and so. Uh, I realized that it was probably in my best interest based on uh, how, how my physique was looking that year to, to drop down a couple pounds and, and go into the light heavyweight class. Uh, so I did, I did a little bit better. Um, this year I've been able to train uh, as I've been healthier uh, compared to last year, um, injury free. And so uh, I feel like I'm more naturally heavyweight this year. So my plan will be as I'm going into Masters Nationals here in about three weeks um, to be uh, back in the heavyweight class. but come in as a, a more legitimate heavyweight and, and come in a little bit bigger and fuller uh, than I did last year so I can uh, uh, hopefully be more competitive. Was there anything you targeted this year like any muscle group that you wanted to bring up or was it just an overall mass or? Well I think that the big thing for me was I, I wanted to be healthy you know I had a, a slight tear in my rotator cuff that happened kind of right before my contest prep last year so that definitely affected my my ability to train you know as hard as I, as I wanted to for really all of last year so um, I took my time and, and came back slowly, and so I've been I've been healthy for um, the majority of the off season and for this whole prep. So, the, probably the biggest change from last year is that I've been able to train hard um, and and more intense. And so, I think the the results from that are that I'm I've been able to, to put some of the size back on and then definitely maintain it as I've been dieting. So, um, you know that that will probably be the, the the primary change. I'm always trying to continue to to bring up my back and. Um, and, and legs and, 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 fart and target some of those areas that I think I always need to improve on. But um, overall, it was just being healthy and being able to train hard consistently every, every week. Okay. Anyone you'd like to thank, buddy? Well, definitely. Uh, you got to, you know, my kind of my whole support team, you know, it's, it's a lot of people um, um, definitely that, that wish me well and have supported me over the years, um, you know, getting the chance to, to – um, to continue to collaborate with a good friend of mine, Ken Jackson, I be pro. He's getting getting ready for his first pro show of the year in, in about five weeks. So, um, he you know he's always been a, a great support for me. Uh, but really, all my team in Kalamazoo, um, um, in Detroit, and and um, 
it's just been uh, it's it's great. It's it, you know it's it's one of those things where you know even people that you don't always know you see in the gym they wish you well. They ask you how you're doing. Um, you you uh, I never take that for granted because you know you never know you know how somebody's feeling on any given day. So someone might pick me up just just by saying hey you know good luck and whatever you're doing. So um, so it's thanking people sometimes that you don't even know because you. You know, you go through this grind and everything, and, and we love to do it, but, you know, sometimes we're tired, sometimes we're, you know, not feeling the great greatest, but um, we stand up there by ourselves, ultimately, but it's, it's a team sport in the sense that you need people around you, you need support, you need people that are, that are that, that have your back in order for you to be successful in the sport. So, um, for all those people that I know and all those that I don't know that support me, I appreciate it, and um, uh, I you know, plan to go out there and do well. Okay, well, good luck, man. Hopefully you snag one of those cards and uh, come back a pro. Thanks a lot. Appreciate yep. it.